Beef stock is the foundation of Demiglace, you're right. Watch for the Remulage episode coming soon. Welcome back to the Demiglace trilogy. This is part two, Espanol sauce. What is Espanol sauce, you say? Well, the story goes, Espanol traces back to 1615 when Louis XIII was to marry Anne of Denmark. The Spanish chefs for the royal wedding added Spanish tomatoes to their French sauce because they thought it was too bland. New sauce became a culinary sensation of the day, and to honor those Spanish chefs, Espanol sauce was born. From this point, French chefs would include the sauce in their repertoire. So let's go make this a cut above, shall we? Okay, so let's start the process to make Espanol sauce. So we're going to start with the mirepoix. We're going to peel it, clean it, take off the ends, take off the skins, and dice it so that we have a finished product. And we're doing this because it's going to be in the finished sauce. So we want to get rid of anything that would not be edible. So with that being done, we're going to take our pan, put it on medium high heat. We're going to take our beef fat. I know I'm making a quart of Espanol sauce, so I am going to need a total of six ounces of roux, which means I need 50% of that to be the fat. So I'm going to take three ounces of fat. I'm going to put it in the pan. When it gets up to temperature, I'm going to throw my vegetables in and I'm going to brown them. You're not going to get a true brown color on the vegetables like you would if you were to use butter or clarified ghee, any of that kind of product, the vegetables will brown more readily. In the beef fat, it'll get a golden color, but it won't brown. You'll get the edges to uh, like caramelize. So to help get it there, I do a little bit high heat, a little bit higher than I would normally. And I would also cook this, render it down a little bit more. Now I'm going to take, I don't measure my flour when I make it in the roux, but I watch how the flour gets absorbed into the fat. And I look at everything and I make sure I see no fat floating around. Nothing is simmering. You don't see any bubbles. You know it's incorporated. And I want to cook the flour for a fair amount of time because you want to get it to brown. So I want to do the same thing with the tomato paste. The tomato paste will give me enough acid and it actually helps to caramelize a lot better than a regular tomato sauce or fresh tomato would. It gives just another, it gives the acidic bite, but it also helps with the color of the sauce in itself. So after everything is caramelized to where you want it, where you think the sauce is going to be dark, you're going to want to deglaze the pan. You, I used a combination of port and some leftover Cabernet wine that we had. Um, probably about a cup's worth total of alcohol. And you want to thoroughly mix it in. And you also want to do the stock slowly. What the purpose of this is, you're, you're trying to incorporate the flour into the liquid without creating a dumpling or little starch balls. So the slower you go with the liquid, the better it is. Once you get it mixed and you get it to where you want it, this is about a quart. Then I added the rest of my seasonings into it. And at this point, what's going to happen, a lot of the impurities are going to come to the top and you're going to want to skim that off. While it's still coming up, the heat will push it to the center or to the side, depending on the position of the flame underneath the pot. And you just keep removing it as you see here. Okay, if you don't have an immersion blender or a chinois cap to strain your sauce with, you can leave your mirepoix and everything in a big chunk and simmer it a little bit longer. And I know most people have a pasta strainer. You would be able to strain this sauce out with a pasta strainer and get similar results. But what I'm going to talk about ahead is if you have an immersion blender and if you have a chinois. So I wanted to show you something. All right, right here is the end of the uh, Espanol. It's finished. It's ready to go. It cooked out over, uh, I probably had it cook in 40 minutes. Cooked out the uh, 
starch of the uh, roux that I created. This is the finished product of the Espanol. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a, a china cap and I'm straining out. You saw me during the time lapse. I was actually taking the, um, the mirepoix and the seasonings I had. I pulled out the bay leaf and I ground everything up with the immersion blender. And now I'm straining it out. And I want to show you the difference before I go too far and I don't have any of the uh, original Espanol. I want to show you what it looks like comparatively side by side here of the difference. You can see the one on the right after it's strained how much smoother it is. And that's just one of the ways in the restaurant business how you make a smoother, silkier sauce. Now, do you need to do this? No, you do not. A couple of ways around it, but you will still always have chunks. If you don't have a chinois or a strainer, you can use uh, what Escoffier would say would be a, a muslin, which is one of these, or if you can find a better, uh, a closest one to a fine mesh china cap. If you don't have that, you can get a bunch of cheesecloth line them in many different layers and then you'd be able to strain it through and that you put it in a colander and be able to strain it out that way or you just have all the nutrients and the ingredients and you keep your espanol like that but to get to demi glaze is where we're going in the next episode we're going to be putting this and letting it reduce and that'll make a nice clearer silkier finer demi glaze it's what you would get in a restaurant. Now, I'm going to show you what was what's left of the mirepoix. That is what's left of the onion, celery, and carrots, and garlic. Okay, now just got done straining it. This is Espanol. That is a nice light consistency for a sauce. Uh, you could adjust your seasonings here. Uh, I added my salt before uh, I put the immersion blender in and it's really nice, beefy, little, the smallest of acidic bites from the tomato paste. It's brown, you can feel the you can feel the silkiness from the marrow, actually from the bone using the first stock. This is pretty much a quality Espanol just as it is. Here, I'll even get you a plate and I'll show you. What it looks like. It still has gloss, it has shine. Look at that. So good. All right, everybody. And all this sauce took me just about two hours from cutting board to finished product you see here. Uh, it's a little bit of an investment, but it is really worth it. So thank you for tuning in to part two of this uh, Demi Glaze series. Uh, this was Espanol sauce. Uh, I should release the uh, third one in a few days. Uh, I should be much shorter because it's just uh, putting everything together for the finished product. All right, everybody. Be well, be safe. Thank you. See you on the next one.